Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com. Tomato 20. We made Mine. it. <laughs> we made it. Okay. So last tomato, we were finishing our submit button controller and showing the MVC approach. We had a crash. And the problem is that we are using the perform selector API, but we don't conform to an S object. And that's a very old API as well, just like UI bar button item. We are going to inherit from NS object. And I don't mind because it's a private class. Hopefully it will pass now and we are done with this button, but we need refactoring. Okay, we are done. But I think we can have a method like tap. Yeah, something like that. Or simulate tap. Okay. Let's create an extension here. Let's make this private. Yeah, it can be private extension. For now, and function simulate tap will be this. Let me run the test again. Cool. Other thing we can do, just to make sure we don't mess up with refactorings, we can have a test that guarantees that we don't have a submit button in the first one. Yeah, I think that's valid. Okay, so if we have a single answer, let's say does not configure the controller with submit button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just to be extra sure we not break anything as we do refactorings in the future. And let's get rid of these, we don't need these anymore. Let's see. Oh good, we are done with the button. Cool. Next. I would just like to mention here that there are other ways of doing these bindings there. Oh, you mean the controller for the button? Yes. That's the MVC approach. Mm -hmm. If you follow the UI kit APIs, that's pretty much what we're going to get. We could have a more reactive approach. We could uh, use the observer pattern. Yes. Using reactive Coco or RX Swift or anything that gives you this functional reactive style. And again, it's private. If we find a better solution in the future, we just change it here. If everything is good, we don't break the tests. Cool. We can have some refactorings here, right? We could have these in a property. Question. We can also put this here. So we can change these as well. Okay, cool. What else can we do? There is another one here. Let's move this outside and let's call this multiple answer question. And now let's change this everywhere. Cool. And we can also have the single. Yeah. So let's call this Q2. You need to change the type of the question also. Oh, yes. This one should be single answer. Thank you. And this one should be single answer. This one should be a single answer, single answer, single answer. Okay. Let me search for this to use it here. Okay. Let me search for this one. Yeah. And here now I think we can just have this in one line. And we can use this. We don't need to force it. Cool. That's it. Let's run. Make sure we didn't break anything. Yeah. Great. All right. Let's just uh, add a, a mark helpers, please. In here? Yes. It's a uh, capital, I think, mark. Oh, yeah. It's not a name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's it. Cool. Okay. Next. Let's have a look at the state of our factory now. Okay, the question is done, but we have the results view controller. That right now is just a view controller. So we should start there. What does it need? A summary and the presentables, which we have the presenter to produce. Okay, so, so we probably need to do the same thing here as we did in our previous view controller. Okay. Okay, well, let's start with a test. Results view controller. 
creates controller. Let's check the type first. So assert not nil controller. Our SUT let SUT equals make SUT with options. What should we give here? We don't care about it, do we? I don't think so. Yeah. And let controller equals SUT dot results to controller and we need to create a result. Mm -hmm. Result. And again, we can have a, a dummy result. And what do we need here? Oh, I think I need to import the engine. Yes. So now I can create a result and answers and the score doesn't matter. And we need to cast it as result view controller. Okay, we need to give it a type. So it should be question string array of string. Oh, you need to give it a dictionary. Yeah. And it's a comma now. Okay, that's the syntax. What can you do? Not use them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fails. So let's return our result view controller. Okay, let's just say with summary. And let's make sure that our controller dot summary needs to match the presenter summary. Mm -hmm. So let's create a presenter. And it's a results presenter. Yeah. And this is tested. So we're just going to use it here. Pass the results. And we need to pass the questions. So questions is this. And we need to pass the correct answers. Okay. The factory can provide that. Yeah. Oh, and the result there is with lowercase r. Okay. So the correct answers here, let's say single Wait. answer should have a1. And for multiple answer, it should be a1, a2. Let's move this outside. And let's call this correct answers. Questions. That's a lot of setup. So those are the questions and the answers. Okay. And here we need a question mark. But let's create user answers. And the user answer was correct. So let me move this up here. So the result is user answers. And the score is two. And let's make sure they have the correct summary. And they don't. Cool. I think you can force unwrap the type there of the result view controller now. Here. Yep. And get rid of this. Okay. So our summary is not matching because, of course, we're not creating with a summary. And we need to create a presenter here. And that's the results presenter. And it needs the result is right here. Mm -hmm. The questions is here as well. Yeah, the factory has it. But we don't have correct answers. Huh. It's time to pass those also. The factory need the correct answers. Yeah. That makes sense. So we need the correct answers here. And we can pass it here with the same time as the options. And now in here we need to pass it as well. Correct answers is correct answers. And we need to pass it here. And this one is a default value. Yep. Because in the question tests, we don't care about this. Exactly. And we can pass our correct answers. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need to use it. Thank you, compiler. Okay. So apparently, I don't need these options here. It's not required. So I'm going to give you the default value in here. So I don't need to expose this in my test. Okay. So make it with correct answers. And we have the summary. Mm -hmm. Now for the answers. So let's test presentable answers. And again, it doesn't confirm to equatable. So we're going to have to test one by one. I miss the objective C days. Yeah. That's fine for now. <laughs> So the same setup, so we're going to have to refactor this later. And I want to make sure that our presentable answers dot count is equal presentable answers 
dot count. That's the first one. Yeah. And apparently, I think it's called answers, not presentable. Oh, it's just answers here. Okay, let's pass the presentable answers from the presenter. Yes. Okay, it passes. And a next test would be to test the properties. Yeah. But we don't have equatable for presentable answers. Well, we could add just for the test target. We would compare. They have exactly the same things. But since we had a fading test, and the simplest thing was just to use the right thing, the presentable answers. So I'm tempted to stop here with this test. I yeah. think that's good enough. I agree. We're testing the presentable answer mapping in the presenter. Yes. And if we start comparing properties one by one here, the problem is that as we change the presentable answer structure to have more things or less things, we're going to break those tests. Yeah. Or we make it conform to equatable or we stop here. I would say let's stop here. Yeah, I'm happy to stop there. Yeah. What should we do with refactoring? We have the same setup here. Yeah. I think we're going to create a make results function and just pass all the given part. We wouldn't save a lot of lines of code here. We still need the presenter. Oh yeah, we need to reference. All of that. Yeah. <laughs> and to make sure that they have the same parameters. Yeah. We can have a function that returns a tuple. Well, let's create a make results controller. And I think we don't have to give it anything. Just need to return a tuple. Result view controller and results presenter. So like this. Yes. So make results. I think that's all we need. If we move this here, then we can return controller presenter. So now we can get results tuple in here and results.controller. So we can do it here and results.presenter. Yep. And we can do the same in here. That's results.controller and results.presenter. Let me run this test. Yep. Okay. Very happy with this. Commit. And let's take a look at the diagram. Okay, that's the updated diagram. So the factory creates the presenters and the view controllers and it implements the view controller factory protocol and it lives in main. So this is the glue code. Main connects everything together without them knowing about each other. Right. There's only one problem. Our results presenter has a reference to the question type we created. Mm -hmm. And we had this question type in the routing module, but I don't want this line crossing here. Yeah. So since more than one module is using question, it's time to think where this should live. I think we are missing a layer. We should have a business logic layer with our entities. But since we have only one question right now, I'm tempted to just move it to engine. If we have this question as a core entity in the engine, that will solve our problems right now and get rid of this line crossing this boundary. Yeah. So I think right now we should move this to the engine. OK. OK, so I moved the question to the engine project. And let me see if I can compile. I cannot. What is wrong? Ah, it should be quiz engine. Okay, let me go back to the quiz app target. Let me run the tests. Uh -huh, and I have trouble here. You cannot find the question. Yeah, we need to make it public. Yes, I think I need to recompile this. Uh -huh. Everything needs to be public now. Recompile. Everything is fine. Back to the app. It's because we need to import about yourself. Yes, now we need to import the quiz engine. Almost there. And here as well. Quiz engine. Okay. It's now in the quiz engine. We can update our diagram. The question now lives in the engine. So we can see all the arrows going inwards in the engine. And Presenter doesn't cross boundaries here. Only the UI crosses a boundary here, and that's correct. We can have many UIs using the same presenter. And 
We have the main connecting everything together, but now we need to start the game in the app delegate. Like everything together? Yes. It's funny because I think we've run the app only twice. For testing the UI. So we have 20 episodes and we run the app only twice. Yeah, just trusting our tests. Maybe it's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. In the next tomato. Mm-hmm.